But this week, OpenAI released a new, faster, and free-to-use GPT model called GPT-40. Not GPT-4.0, GPT-40. O as in... Yeah. (laughs) O as in Omni is what they're saying. Omni meaning all, right? Meaning meaning everything. Um, And the reason they've called it that is actually this is part of their spring update. Um, in a, they released this in a 30 minute press conference. And, uh, the reason that it is Omni is because it is now natively multimodal. So we've seen multimodal AIs before where you can give them a text and they can give you back voice or you can give them voice. They can give you back text or images and those kind of things. But this one is truly multimodal. It will take in, uh, text, audio and image and produce audio. Um, text, image, and video eventually, right? Because we're going to get, you know, we'll get to the point where the, um, uh, the video generation comes out. But what it's how this has happened in the past is you've put in a prompt and it is like, if you've asked for a, an image prompt back out, it's translated basically your text input and taken it out as an image. Now it'll take an image in and produce an image out. So it's truly multimodal. This is brand new first time we've seen this. Does it create squirrels that turn into chickens and run away? <laughs> My guess is yes. <laughs> My guess is nothing fundamentally changes here other than it's now truly multimodal. Um, so some new features, and one of the features that they talked about a lot in their presentation was the, with, with the voice features, right? Um, Scarlett Johansson is still there. I mean, Sky is still there. <laughs> but she's now much better. She's now just she's faster, almost real time. So, and this is apparently due to the multimodality part because it's taking in voice and producing voice. It's not having to go through the generation of generating translation to text and then back from text back to voice using Whisper. Now it's truly voice to voice, so it can be much faster, which is they great. They paid ScarJo for her. Um, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> for her. <laughs> she has to be suing them by this point, yeah. right? I mean, the whole internet's talking about her. It has to be. Um, but it can also do voice inflections now too. So it can do like t- different types of voices. They showed a demo where the AI sang and it became more dramatic and it was very cool. It was also creepily flirty in places, which was very weird. Some of the demos were like, oh, that's a little, it was strange. It had that like AI girlfriend vibe. Um, they did a translation demo, which was also cool using this. So they said basically the demo was there was an English speaker and a Spanish speaker. And they told the AI, I said, hey, I'm going to speak to you in English. And I want you to translate to my friend here who speaks Spanish. And when he speaks Spanish, translate back to English. And it did it real time, real quick. It worked perfectly. I could totally see that being the way you now translate with people as long as it translates it correctly. <laughs> Universal <laughs> translator, baby. Let's go, Star Trek. Yeah, so very Star Trek. Very Star Trek. <laughs> Um, it also had some new vision features as well. So you can point your camera at something. And in a demo, they showed uh, somebody pointing the camera at a math problem, and they're writing out the math problem. Yes, it was simple, but it solved the math problem along with the person yeah. um, just by looking at what was in the camera. It could also look at like emotions on your face and stuff as well. They, they pointed the camera at the guy and said, hey, how am I feeling? How do you think I'm feeling right now? And he was smiling. And he said, hey, I think you're feeling happy, which was kind of cool. I like, could see this being a feature. Um, so, Bobby, what do you think? What's, what's your what's, what's your one favorite new thing about this? And do you think there's anything in here you're going to be using? So I used it a little bit yesterday. And when I logged on, the first thing I noticed, it said, do you want to know a fact about the Roman Empire? <laughs> like, <laughs> normally, I don't think about the Roman Empire, but like, you know. Uh, yes. That's so funny. I think OpenAI knows what they're doing with that. I'm yeah. pretty sure they're like, let's add a little, little bit of a... Uh, uh, internet culture in here and let's uh, make that one of the first prompts so, a, so yeah this I'm is one of the only things user. that is available right now is yeah. gpt 4.0 in its text format none so of the we, other features are available yet so i'm a paid user of gtp i've uh, been okay. that way for a year um actually we're going to convert over to a corporate account me and kevin were talking about the day that we're going to share our gpts together the thing that we liked was we can train a private gpt and then we're going to try to produce content with it on just at least written content or at least maybe it'll give us a more head start to do it yep so we're finding things to use the the biggest thing here is is voice to voice in my opinion because if i said from the beginning the chat bot is not the app the end all of apps ever no. this has got to go to some kind of hardware device where you can talk to it and then you don't need to type in prompts or whatever you just ask it things and it does it i think that's the coolest thing that they've done they've made that faster which is everyone says all the glasses and everything's really slow. 
for AR to truly work, it does need to be real time. You ask it a question, it tells you right away. If you have to wait eight seconds, you miss the exit on the highway or, yeah. you know, you don't turn down the street where you need to. Um, so I think that's really important. So I think it's kind of cool, but it's still the same text generation, what we could tell. It still wrote the same crappy blog articles. And we <laughs> yeah. had a, I mean, had the model thing. is still, yeah, it's faster. Yeah. It's cheaper from a, yep. from, a, um, from a developer's perspective, too. It's like half the price. So if you're using the API to use this in something, it's two times as fast half the price, which is great, but it's still fundamentally the same way of generating the thing. If it's wrong, it's, it hallucinates. Still has all the same problems. The reason before. it's 50% cheaper is that no one has bought the API. So, like, that's the problem. <laughs> and so, like, I do think that generative text AI has to find a customer. Mm -hmm. It's found some customers like us, but us paying $20 a month isn't going to pay the bills for them training not this in the, I'm the surprised magnitudes they even, of billions, if not a trillion yeah, dollars. I'm surprised it even this. covers that cost, to right. be honest. It yeah. doesn't. <laughs> no, no, it can't. Yeah. And so, like, I mean, I guess they're counting on the fact that a lot of users will buy it monthly and not use it. So they don't have any kind of compute cost with those. But like still, it's, you know, it's it's super inexpensive. The thing that was funny, though, and me and Kevin talked about this a lot, was that he did everything on an Apple device, which was weird that he demoed on an Apple and iPhone and, and it wasn't yeah. on a Windows device. Huh. And so... You know, since Everything. Microsoft all is fifty percent owner, Microsoft. I don't know if he got any calls from them or like, hey, bro, right. like use a Surface, you know, <laughs> or uh, you know. But that is uh, interesting. The other thing we th kind of theorized about this was like, well, maybe he didn't want to steal Copilot's thunder because Copilot will come out with something mm. like this. That the desktop app they're releasing is Mac OS only. Yeah. So I guess Windows is going to have a Copilot version of this that runs on Windows. Yeah. Yeah. Open and AI. And ChatGPT pushing out a Mac only version was definitely not on my bingo card. That doesn't seem like it's like you, you would not have thought that. And the only answer to that is Windows and Microsoft is going to push out their own version on their it's own. It's going to be married more. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's no way. Just, I, I just don't buy it. And the fact they used all Apple hardware just was strange to me. So the memes were like, you know, they had the memes of going like this. Yes, it's only on Mac, you know, people walking <laughs> down the street. Don't look this way, Nadella, the, a lot of that stuff. But I, I really believe that w Windows or Microsoft had to talk to them and say, only put it on a Mac. We'll do the Windows thing. That's what I think is yeah. really going here. And they'll they'll separate it a month or two, and then there'll be a co-pilot announcement so they both can win. That's what I think. And you that can have sense. the Mac OS thing. We don't right. care about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, have your have your pretty little app. We'll <laughs> yeah. we'll integrate it to everything that we've got. Yeah. The other the other theory, Kevin, is that the on device thing is coming to the iPhone. I think we see that in June or July, and oh, yeah. I think this is the model that's going to be doing it. Something yeah. like this that runs on device that they can do it really quick. Yeah, I think that's that that's a definite thing. I think Siri is going to get a massive upgrade. If it doesn't, it's going to be a problem. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see that when the Apple do they Apple change the voice of Siri or do they keep Siri around or she get fired? I think for they Scarlet. keep the voice. No, <laughs> she the she voice. becomes Scar. <laughs> I think they keep Siri the voice. gets I think fired for Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> she does an Apple deal. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. Like, hey, if you guys are going to use my voice, then like let me come paid. in and record some stuff and and give him a bag. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Some of the other stuff they have on the side. I don't know if you guys have been through this, but they actually like from the from the presentation was only thirty minutes. But there's a whole bunch of other videos you can go on the site here um, and look at. There's a whole bunch of other demos that they have, which are really cool. And then they showed some other like capabilities down here too. Just to look at a couple of these. Like they have this like this image one where they took a an image, a brand, and put it on a on a on an item, just like you could do in Photoshop, right? But this yeah. is done with AI. They took the logo, they slapped it on. I was like, that's kind of cool. This 3D object thing was kind of interesting. They had it render a 3D object spinning around. That's nice. AI generated. That's I pretty think, cool. I think the first feature you just showed, I didn't see that. That'd be great for um, these T-shirt um, vendors. You're making a shop and you have a oh, model. Yeah. And you just yeah. want to put your branded thing on it. Yeah. Kind of cool. If it works. Thing. Yeah, exactly. If it works. Time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of, there was a lot of like little hidden stuff they didn't really talk about. Um, and you can see them in these little kind of little demos that they have on here. Um, talk about character design and the movie creations and they do these other things and it's kind of cool there's a lot buried in here that they did not showcase as part of the kind of 30 minute presentation there's a lot to it a lot more than you realize there is to it um 
short of just the GPT-4 model, which is all we have access to at this point, by the way. We only have access to the text input, text output part of this. The voice part, the video part, obviously we don't have yet. The the um, the the um, the audio part, we 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 don't have yet. I keep checking the app. The app says that it's four o, but when you go to voice generation, it just uses the old four version mm. of the model. Well, one um, thing we can say for sure, it. Sam has been indoctrinated in Microsoft by naming it the worst thing you could possibly name it by using an O where a zero <laughs> should be. It's like you know, yeah. I guess I, I guess well, if we're going to invest, that is we're contagious. Name it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like yeah. what do you call oh, it so you, oh. you're microsoft <laughs> yeah. you, then you know you you gotta you gotta embrace the terrible name <laughs> it's like it's so not zero it, oh, it's, it's gpt oh. 4.0 oh. no 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 it's 4.0 4 oh. 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 Right. Oh. oh yeah terrible terrible branding what's but- that stand for multi-model Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got so, you. so there's like one at O in that, and it's like three letters or three well, words. Said four M. I mean, be, but you know, but like, well, hey, it's supposed I, to be for know? Omni. Oh, here's the other thing too, by the <laughs> way. Omni model. Okay. Omni oh, model. Right. Because it's supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be all. That's the income. They're supposed to be taking taking all inputs, throw out all outputs, right? That's the Omni model. But actually, I asked, um, I asked GPT what the O stands for, and you know what it said? Oh, yeah. What? Open. It stands for open. It totally got it wrong. I'm like, I'm asking you. It's literally yeah. your name, and you don't even know what it stands for. Yeah. We think yeah. it's open. It's literally right here, look. They couldn't have... I mean, it's right See? here, look. Right, It's the first line of their, their website. It says it. Yet itself didn't know that it was for Omni and thought it was open. I would have used M, though. I'm just saying. So I would have said multi. Can funny. we just go with multi? Right. That's what I would have right. said in the meeting. No, it's so for, Omni. But oh, yeah, it's an O. 3M is the thing, but 4M isn't a thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited about messing with some of this stuff, though. I think it's going to be cool, especially the voice. I think the voice. I've always liked the voice thing. I think it's great. I've always found it's my. It's actually my favorite way to interact with the AI, especially on the phone. I'm having I, a conversation. I think most with it. people great. prefer that. If like if you're work, yeah. you're, if you're like talking to your assistant. So I've got you know my Google assistant, and you know weird people like Kevin have a Siri and things like that. <laughs> but. um but yeah, I think if you're talking to it, it feels more natural instead of like. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how it works either from a technical perspective because they haven't really said. But I'm guessing a couple of things are happening here for it to be so fast because it is so fast. We're talking about like not even a second between finishing to speak between it starts speaking. Whereas now it's like six seconds, maybe five seconds. It's a chunk of time. So I'm guessing they're doing one of a couple of things. Either it's a combination of on device and cloud generation which I think it may be because it's giving you some information back almost straight away. That could be the on-device stuff versus the cloud thing that it's going out to. Then it's pulling those things back in afterwards. Or I also think that it could be like partial canned responses. Mm -hmm. So here's if you start listening to them and you start listening to people who have the demo videos, the, the first response is always something along the lines of, yeah, I can definitely help with that. Let me help you with that. And it's filled in that tiny little gap there with almost filler words right right right. before it's cloud is actually put back the data back in and it's it's carried on talking which i don't mind because that's what we do as humans it actually makes it feel more human right we do little filler bits when somebody asks us a question we say let me think about that uh yeah okay i got that or we like repeat back the question to give us some time to like okay so you're looking for this oh okay now i've got it yeah i have a feeling it's a little bit of that going on yeah, because that it never really sense. just gives you the answer straight up front. It kind of takes a second for the answer to actually really come to fly. But it yeah. has this kind of conversational quality with you that mm-hmm. says, yeah, let me let me think about that. Or, yeah, hold on. Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. And that's enough time for it to go to the cloud, come back, and have the yeah. answer for you. And then they can, like, bulk up their response time, too, with that, like, you know, we've got an answer within, like, you know, a second. Saying. But it's yes. the, like... Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's exactly how they'll frame it. They'll give you from the first time it starts speaking, whether that contains right. the answer or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it'd be interesting. I'm interested to uh, to mess with it. We don't know any dates. It just we know it's going to roll out to premium members first. Uh, we we have premium, so hopefully we get it soon. Uh, I, I check it every day, and the only way to actually check it is I'll go into the thing and I'll start talking to it, and I'll say, "Hey, what version of GPT are you based on?" And right now, she just takes five seconds and says GPT four. <laughs> So Weird. I'm assuming when it happens, it's just, she's just going to instantly answer me back and say, yeah, I'm based on 4.0. Does um, she know, though? Because, you know, she doesn't know what O stands for. Well, I'll know because it'll be much faster. 